One, two, let me say it three times. Check, check, check. I don't need a microphone when my show is on. So grab a chair, so your booty's right there and stare at the master with the accent. People are always asking. My origination, I'll take you to the destination. My words, a subliminal trip like a spaceship. We rip through wormholes and shit, making history for these kids to see and know. Come with me, and together we make. Hola, mi nombre es. Miranda Tozier Robbins y soy la productora, directora y editora de The Shorty Show. Esta es una edición especial del 11 de septiembre en la que capturamos y documentamos a nuestros bomberos locales y socaristas en honor a nuestras Heroes, Kairos, in ese tragical dia. Not working. I'll get closer. Thank you. Uh, to all city, state uh, representatives here, uh, thank you very much. To all spectators, thank you very much for joining in on our day of remembrance. Nine eleven, twenty years. We can't hear you at all. A big moment for a lot of us here. Um, we try to set the area a little bit for you uh, to be a little bit more close to the understanding. Um, we dealt with timelines, we deal with tradition, uh, we deal with honor. Uh, the timeline back then was a difficult time for uh, the city of Fitchburg as it was for everyone else in the area. Uh, we had just gotten over a disaster of the Whistler Six. So, not even two years later, um, 75% of the city emergency workers here had spent their time down there. We were still dealing from old wounds. So you can imagine what it was like for the firefighters, the EMS, the police officers, to see a tragedy of such mass magnitude. Um, honor, I can't say not you're all here, honoring the memory all those who lost their lives, but you're also honoring the people standing in front of you who may be faced with the same challenge um, as I stand here uh, in honor of all of you. Um, you have the representatives of the police department, you have the campus PD, you have the fire department, you have the EMS coordinators. The lights are all lit up around this entire station. To my knowledge, memory, in my opinion, this is the first time that we have had all these representative stage lights burning on this piece of steel for 20 years. So 20 years later, this is as close to a reenactment as we can have to what the real situation was standing in front of this piece of metal right from New York City. I especially thank my speakers, my clergy who came out today because they are di directly from New York City had a direct relative impact to Ground Zero, and they may share a kind word on that. Um, I would like to have my, um, I would start the ceremony. I would like to have my senior most firefighter, uh, Mike Torres, come to the bell. Uh, as the state is practicing these ceremonies across the state, we're opening up with four sets of five bells. We will follow uh, that same protocol. Now that the flag is lowered to half mass, I would like to take uh, comments from the fire chief first. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Jordan. 
I would be remiss if I uh, did not mention Lieutenant Jordan and Lieutenant Howe from the Fishburg Police Department for putting this together today for all of us in remembrance of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So uh, thank you both uh, for your hard work in putting this together today. Good morning. On behalf of the City of Fitchburg, the Fitchburg Fire Department, the Fitchburg Police Department, Fitchburg State Police, and MedStar Ambulance, I would like to welcome you all to our 20th anniversary, September 11th Memorial. 20 years ago today, the fabric of our nation was shook to its core when the worst terrorist attack in our country's history occurred in New York, Washington, and Pennsylvania. The attack took the lives of nearly 3,000 people, including 343 New York City firefighters and paramedics, 23 New York City police officers, and 27 Port Authority police officers. Today, we gather here in front of our 9-11 monument, adorned with a piece of the twisted steel pulled from the rubble, to remember and honor the sacrifices made, the bravery shown, and the lives lost. It has been two decades since our country was forever changed and the events of September 11th may be fading in the minds of many Americans. It is for this reason that today, seemingly more than ever, it is crucial that we take time to honor those lost in New York, Washington, and Pennsylvania. We remember the passengers and crew members, the firefighters and paramedics, the law enforcement officers, and the military personnel. We remember that they were more than victims of an unspeakable act. They were also mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, and neighbors and friends. We know that they will never be defined by the story of those who stole them away. Rather, they will be defined by their humanity, by their stories, by their laughter, that still echoes in the homes and the hearts of those who love them. What our attackers fail to understand is that in the darkness that they hoped would envelop us on 9-11, instead summoned our most noble and righteous human instincts. The instinct to care for one another, to transcend our divisions and see ourselves as fellow citizens to race towards danger and risk everything to protect one another. The instinct to unite. If we learn anything watching the heroes of 9-11, it's that the strength of the human spirit knows no bounds and that even the gravest of threats against us only serve to reveal our true strength. That our capacity to act with love and courage in the face of immense challenge is what defines us as Americans. While that fateful day revealed to the world the power of hate and malice, it also served to show the very best of humanity. From the courage of the first responders rushing towards the burning towers, to the heroic actions of the passengers and crew on United Airlines Flight 93, to the thousands of civilians surrounding the Twin Towers and Pentagon, helping their fellow man in the greatest time of need. The world was reminded that in the darkest of hours, the people of this great nation would fight and persevere. As we continue to move forward from the events of September 11th, may we always continue to keep in our hearts and minds the importance and significance of the sacrifices made that day. Thank you, Chief Marama. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to echo the words of Chief Marama by thanking Lieutenant Jordan and Lieutenant Howe for their coordination efforts today. Um, without, without the hard work that each of them put into this event, uh, we wouldn't have the type of showing we have here today. I'd also like to thank the members of my department, the men and women of the Fitchburg Police Department, the men and women of the Fitchburg Fire Department, and the rest of the first responders with us here today, Fitchburg State, our EMS partners at MedStock, uh, thank you for being here today. September 11th, 2001, was a day that changed America and the course of our nation forever was altered. At 0846 hours, 
American Airlines Flight 11 was flown into the side of North Tower at the World Trade Center. 17 minutes later, United Airlines Flight 175 flew into the side of the South Tower. One hour, 42 minutes later, both the North and South Towers, 110 stories, collapsed as a result of the impact. At 0932 hours, American Airlines Flight 77 was hijacked and flown into the west side of the Pentagon. And finally, United Airlines Flight 93 was hijacked. It is believed the hijack is intended to fly into the White House or the U.S. Capitol due to the heroic actions of the crew and the passengers who gained control of the plane it crashed into a field in the state of Pennsylvania. Because of the cowardly actions on this day, 2,977 innocent people were lost. 25,000 injuries were sustained. The actions on 9-11 resulted in the single deadliest day for American first responders. 340 plus firefighters lost their life that day. 72 plus law enforcement officials lost their life that day. Our way of life was forever changed. This was an attack on the American way of life and our democracy. The days to follow brought a mix of emotions, grief, anger, and finally resolve. Patriotism became a national cry Americans were glued to whatever form of media they could find. Just as we remember those lost, we also honor the families who bravely endured life without their loved ones who died on September 11th. I, like many others this past week, reflected on those moments on September 11th. As my parents and grandparents remembered Pearl Harbor, I too forever will remember that day. My most vivid memory was the deep blue, clear sky, picture perfect morning, not a cloud in the sky, much of what, much of what, what we have today. Little did any of us realize that at that time, our world would change forever and ever so quickly. It's been 20 years. A new generation has begun post 9-11. We as Americans have a duty united as one to never forget the tragic loss of life and the heroic actions of others as our ancestors passed on to us the memories from Pearl Harbor we as the survivors of 9-11 have that same responsibility to pass the memories on to those who come behind us so that no one will ever forget those we lost the sacrifices made on the most dreadful day in our history. Thank you. I will now, now ask you all to bow your heads in a moment of silence. to call Pastor John Izakio on New York City forward. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Jordan. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and to share with all of you this morning. Um, thank you to our police and fire chiefs and all our law enforcement personnel here, everybody gathered together today, all our officials, of this great city. My name is Johnny Zacchio and I serve as the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel of Grace and Truth in Yonkers, New York, just 20 minutes north of New York City. I'd like to read a portion of scripture to you so as to encourage you today. 
and it's found in the book of Psalms, Psalm 121. And it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I want to start by saying thank you for all that you do. It takes a special kind of person who wakes up every day willing to lay down your lives for the sake of serving others, while all the while knowing that one day you may be called upon to make the ultimate sacrifice and to lose your life in order to serve someone else. The events of September 11th continue to affect so many lives to this day, and it is a reminder to all of us of what evil can do, but also, even more so, how good will always triumph in the end. It's a reminder of the great privilege it is to serve our communities and the great calling upon your lives as firefighters and police officers and first responders to arrive on the scene to offer hope today. But who does the hero look up to when they need strength and encouragement? Well, they usually look to someone above and beyond them. And some of you may have that person you run to in times of trouble some of you may not. Maybe the person you relied upon is no longer around, or perhaps one day they will not be able to help you. And that's why I want to encourage you that when it seems as though everywhere you look, it appears to be hopeless and helpless, I want to encourage you to look up, as the psalmist declared, to look up to Almighty God. He alone will always be there for you, and He will never let you down, and He is only a prayer away. He will watch over you, protect you, and preserve you, your goings out and your comings in. You can trust in Him with all your heart. He can heal you of all your pain. And He is able to give you peace of mind today and courage to face tomorrow. That's the God that I serve. And as we stand here together reflecting upon this day 20 years ago, I remember going down to Ground Zero uh, the Saturday after the events that had taken place, just seeking to minister to people. And as the chief had said, remembering that beautiful deep blue sky when September 11th took place and just how gorgeous of the day it was and then to see the tragedies that unfolded. But being there, seeing the smoke ascending from the pit, this horrible smell, and the walls plastered with pictures of loved ones, people coming up to us, with tears streaming down his face, holding up pictures of their loved ones, asking if we saw them. And saying, I remember saying, oh God, how do we comfort these people? And I remember he just said, just talk to them about me, pray with them, encourage them from the scriptures. You know, Jesus Christ said this in Matthew chapter 11. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, I will give you rest for your souls. Easy and I am gentle at heart and lowly and humble at heart and just want to encourage you um, that the God of the Bible namely Jesus Christ is able to meet your greatest needs and the greatest need he came to fulfill was our need of a hero not a superhero but a spiritual hero a savior to save us from our sins to give us eternal life if we would simply believe on him. And I'm not sure who I'm speaking to today. Maybe many of you here know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Maybe some of you are walking with him today. Maybe some of you used to walk with him but are no longer walking with him for some reason. But I just want to encourage you that if you come to Jesus and you confess your sins, we've all sinned against God. The Bible says that our sins have separated us from God, but that if we confess our sins and we repent and we believe on Jesus Christ, that he would save us. And that holds true to this day. 
And that's the greatest need that every single one of us needs. And so I just want to, in closing, offer that, make that invitation open to all of you here today. If, if you want to turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ for salvation, He alone can give comfort, hope, peace, joy, forgiveness, eternal life. It's only found in Christ. It's found in nowhere else and in no one else. And so as I close in prayer, I want to thank you for your time. I want to remind you that God loves you so much. He proved that by sending His only begotten Son to the cross. He was punished for our sins in our place. He died, He was buried, and on the third day, He rose from the grave. He's ascended into the right hand of the Father in heaven, and He's going to be coming soon. And He desires to have a personal, intimate relationship with you. And so, I thank every single one of you, Lord. I thank you, God, for this opportunity to speak to all these men and women here. Lord, all these precious people who you love so much, and you prove that love. Your word tells us that you demonstrate your own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if that's you, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I'm going to ask you right where you're standing. Just raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. Anybody here? It's not about religion. God bless you. Any more of you here? God bless you. Any more? If you want to turn from your sin and receive Christ as your Savior. God bless you guys. Awesome. Well, for those of you who raise your hand, you can just say this prayer in your heart. Those of you who maybe didn't raise your hand, just you come to Christ. He'll receive you to Himself. Doesn't matter what you've done or what you're doing. He will forgive you. And He will receive you unto Himself. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I confess my sins to you, Lord. I ask you to forgive me and to wash me by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and to cause me to walk with you all the days of my life. I thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. God bless you, those of you who said that prayer. Know this, that you are a new creation in Christ, the Bible says. You have passed from death to life, from darkness to light. And Father, I pray you continue to encourage all these men and women, these heroes standing here, Lord, give them supernatural courage and strength to continue to serve their communities. We are so thankful for them. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless every single one of you. And God bless the United States of America. call forward uh, some further readings of the firefighter prayer and the police prayer. Good morning. My name is Pastor Steve Mayo. I'm the pastor of the Elm Street Community Church here in Pittsburgh. And I'm here representing the churches and pastors of this city where you serve. And I just want to say what an honor and privilege it is to be able to offer up this prayer to incredible officers and staff of our fire and police departments, as well as local and state officers. As one of the many citizens you serve and protect on a daily basis, I just want to say thank you on behalf of the citizens of this city and let you know that you are appreciated. We do not take you or the risk that you make on a daily basis for granted. This time I've been asked to share the firefighters and the police officers' prayer. I'll start with the firefighters' prayer. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save a life, whatever be its age. Help me to embrace a little child before it's too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert to hear the weakest shout and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my neighbor and protect his property. And if, according to your will, I have to lose my life, bless with your protecting hand my loving family from strife. 
This is the police officer's prayer. Lord, I ask for courage. Courage to face and conquer my own fears. Courage to take me where others will not go. I ask for strength, strength of body to protect others and strength of spirit to lead others. I ask for dedication, dedication to my job to do it well, dedication to my community to keep it safe. Give me, Lord, concern for others who trust me and compassion for those who need me. And please, Lord, through it all, be at my side. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come here on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 to remember the brave men and women who choose to run towards danger as everyone else runs away. You have blessed this city, this community, with some amazing people who care about our welfare enough to risk their own. We thank you for them today. Lord, we want to lift them before you at this time. We ask for your protection as they go about their work. Watch over them and take care of them. Keep them self, them safe. Watch over their families as they work to protect ours. We ask you to give them wisdom when things are unclear, to know the right things to say and the right things to do. May they continue to develop relationships with the community, breaking down barriers and building bridges. Would you continue to lead young people to desire to step into these critical selfless roles and remind us to thank them for all they do. Help us to remember them in our prayers. May they know that there are people who recognize and appreciate the risk that they take every day for us, even if it doesn't seem it at times. We pray for your protection over their lives and the lives of their families. I ask these things in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As tradition follows, we usually open the ceremony with five bells. Uh, the five bells are done with our senior firefighter. Um, it's tradition, as we like to keep, ends. we will end off with our junior most um, firefighter, and we have invited a junior most police officer along with it today. In the spirit and the thoughts that they will carry these stories, um, the, these memories of 20, 30 years from now, they will be the senior most on their prospective departments. Um, I would like to call forward Police Officer Ramos and Fire Department Firefighter Brian Nielsen. Police Officer Ramos will be ringing the five sets of bells. Uh, Firefighter Brian Nielsen will wait by the flag for orders to reset the flag. Um, with a um, soon-to-be tribute uh, standby. Uh. the police chief and the fire chief to flank the base of the flag and I would call police officers to big me forward to call attention to the prospective troops here.
concludes the ceremony today. I would like to thank everybody who came along. I do have some public officials who would like to speak. If anybody from the state came in that I did not see and want to speak, please come forward at this time. I would like now I would like to 